on, NYC Beer Week is back. I am so sorry. Almost 40 New York City breweries are participating in Beer Week and nearly half are based here in Brooklyn. We've assembled a few of those Brooklyn brewers today to talk about some of the most pressing issues facing the craft beer industry. We want to talk about it warts and all. Joining us today are Ann Riley from Five Boroughs. Welcome. Thank you. Kyle Hurst from Big Alice. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. And Katerina Martinez from Lineup. Thanks for having me. Um, so we're at a moment when a lot of different industries are sort of gazing inward, um, thinking about if they're being inclusive to marginalized populations. So maybe, Ann, we can start with you. Can you tell me a little bit about your work um, as vice chair of Pink Boots? Sure. So Pink Boots is a worldwide organization, nonprofit, that's dedicated to the education, inspiration, and development of women in who work in the beer community. And we've recently here in New York City, there's a number of us who've been involved, a number of women who've been involved in the beer community for a number of years. We decided to relaunch the New York City chapter. And in addition to Pink Boots, which is for women who work in beer, make their make part of their uh, living in beer. There's also a group called Barley's Angels, which is for women who might not be professionally in beer yet, but definitely are heavily involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one of the things that's interesting is that actually when you look historically at beer brewing, it was primarily the domain of women, yes. right? Like back from the Middle Ages. And something that Isabel, my producer, who's also a, a home brewer, taught me was oh. that um, a lot of our, uh, the archetypical images of witches with like the pointy hats <laughs> and the cauldrons mm -hmm. come from alewives. Yep. Is that yes, right? Can exactly. you know some of that history? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you've probably seen, I talk about this all the time. <laughs> Women were the original brewers up until, you know, um, the what era the the industrial revolution basically um, when they and, realized they could make money on yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. so labor is valuable <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the witch side of it's pretty fun I, I learned yeah. that as well and th that just means I can be a witch for Halloween every single year and <laughs> that's I have right to be creative about it so um, I want to talk a little bit about maybe the line between trying to bring more women into the beer industry and pandering in a way that feels like um, paternalistic. Right. Uh, you, there's a quote, this is from, um, <laughs> this is from a, a thrillist piece. <laughs> we did like, oh, a marginal amount of research, not okay. too much, no, don't worry. Um, so you said, I don't believe that there's anything inherently wrong with drawing attention to a woman-run company in a male-dominated industry or even kitschy femi branding. Uh, it is, however, problematic to assume that your female audience wants a different product than your male audience. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you walk that line between, you know, brewing a beer that may be kind of pink in hue right. and being like, beer, now for women. Right. <laughs> um, it's pretty funny because in a lot of these interviews, I get asked, so what kind of beer are you going to make for, as a woman, are you going to make for women? And my answer is always just, beer, like regular beer. Um, I think what I was trying to say in that quote is, I mean, it, you can be femme and you know still be a feminist, right? You can embrace the color pink. We do it in the title of Pink Boots. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't make anything, any beer that's specifically for women. Um, I name a lot of beers after bad dates, so I think it's relatable to women, <laughs> but you know, outside of that, Beers for everybody, and there's no style except that except for children. Yeah, except <laughs> yes. for, for everyone under over 21. 21. Yes. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So it's you know we there isn't a specific style that uh, women like better. But yes, I I would love to make a pink beer, um, but just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I'm only going to be making pink beer, you know? Right, so. sure. Um, I am confused as to why we're not drinking beer yeah. right now, personally. Um, so maybe, Kyle, could you tell us what you have brought, and uh, can I have it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I brought today our Kings and Queens of Bavaria. It's actually a three-way collaboration we did, and it is a smoked lager and recently won gold in Costa Rica. So this is an internationally okay. acclaimed beer. <laughs> Talk to me about a smoked lager. What's it smoking? How do you smoke it? <laughs> Tell me how you would make that. Well, it, it is legal to smoke this in New York State. <laughs> okay. uh, so s the smoke part of it is uh, that it's smoked malt. So there's a beechwood smoked malt. So we don't actually smoke the beer. The malt that's used to, uh, to make the beer is uh, smoked. So this one's, we've done some other you know, bigger, more smoky, uh, heavily smoked beers. This one is uh, much more subtle, easy drinking, and uh, you know, as as most lagers are. Cheers. 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 Thanks, guys. Cheers. So we have Beer Week coming up. Um, 
maybe we'll stick with you, Kyle. Can you tell me a little bit about what Beer Week is, how long you've been involved, and, and how people can participate? Um, so, yeah, New York City Beer Week started around 10 years ago, um, you know, just by the you know handful of uh, brewers that existed, most of which, the, uh, most of them at the time were based in Brooklyn. So it's a chance for uh, breweries and retailers to kind of, you know, highlight, uh, you know, craft beer in New York City, uh, but also feature New York City made uh, beers. All right, and you guys are all participating with the breweries? Yes, yes. Excellent, um, and we'll make sure that people have the website so they can check out mm -hmm. all the related events. Um, now that we have drinks, maybe we can talk about race. Um, so, <laughs> <My segue. laughs> so there was um, recently a, a blog post that I read, and I actually forget the author, but um, it was sort of taking the craft brewing community or the craft beer community to task for not addressing race in maybe the same way that um, gender economic inequality has been discussed. And they talked in particular about the founders, the lawsuit being brought about against founders mm -hmm. and why haven't more people come and spoken out about that. So I'm wondering if you guys would care to talk a little bit about um, diversity in in the industry and, and what, what the craft beer industry is trying to do to, to correct for that. Anne, do you want to? Um, yeah. Sure. That's something that uh, many of us speak about a lot um, because we are in New York City. Mm -hmm. And just from that perspective, diversity is all around us all the time. And we are very lucky within our Brewers Guild that we are really well represented, quite honestly. Our, our board is exceptionally diver diverse as are our members. And we've, um, it's a constant conversation because we do want, like, beer is for everyone. Beer is inclusive. And no one ever wants anyone to feel excluded. So... You know, what we're talking about is how, how do we go about doing that without, as you were saying earlier, pandering. You don't want to, like, it's inclusive. It's something that everyone should feel is uh, approachable. Um, and I guess, again, like, I keep going back to we're in New York City, so it's, it's just, it's something that is all around us all the time kind and, of thing. And Garrett Oliver at Brooklyn yes, Brewers is like absolutely. a real trailblazer mm -hmm. as For well. For sure. Um, and Kat, you identify as Latinx as well? Yes. And um, you've talked about how um, when you have open houses, I don't know if that's the right word, but that, you know, you get a tremendous turnout from your community supporting you. Sure. Um, I think that was actually probably one of the biggest surprises for me, uh, just because I got a lot of attention just for being a woman. Um, it wasn't until my launch that I had people um, from all over, from the Bronx, uh, you know, and Queens come down and say how important it was to them that I was Hispanic. Um, and then I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize that because, you know, it is an underrepresented uh, minority uh, in beer, but that's changing very rapidly, which is cool. Um, there's festivals uh, that are being thrown. Um, it, just like anything, uh, you know, it takes us being welcoming and um, open to other diversity, you know, people coming through. So like I, the founders thing is disappointing, um, mm -hmm. to maybe, say the least. And maybe like, people don't know about the founders yeah. issue. Would you mind just yeah, us um, on it? Yeah, the lawsuit from what I understand is a past employee member um, that said he got called a lot of derogatory terms when he was there and I mean, it's, it's very strange because it is like Ian was saying, we are, beer is community, you know, so we don't really ever expect um, that to be the case, but if you can imagine being maybe the only person of color that works at um, a brewery in like the Midwest and then having to deal with that, um, it's just really disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, and I don't know what's going to come of it, but I would say it, it's disappointing because we've never done, we've never had something like that happen. Like Ian was saying, we our board is so diverse. Like, you know, it, we don't even think about it, but um, yeah. It, you can read more about the lawsuit uh, without saying any bad things. Like, uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out for them. I hope it. I hope he gets everything out of it because it sounds like he had a really horrible working environment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess maybe one somewhat unusual thing about the beer industry is that, as opposed to like, um, you know, media or entertainment or uh, industrial manufacturing that might be centered in specific geographical locations, like beer is all over, mm -hmm. and so that perhaps you're dealing with things on an industry-wide level, but also, you know, on a, on a regional and, and cultural level as well. I don't know if that rings true at all. Um, but maybe we can try another beer. <laughs> sure. Um, and do you want to sure. so pour I think, something? Um, yeah, moving from Kyle's, uh, which is a lager, <laughs> <laughs> we can um, open the Five Boroughs Pilsner, which is a Czech-style Pilsner, and it's one of the styles we make uh, now five styles that are available all year. 
Nick Griffin yep. mm -hmm. is a big fan of traditional styles and does lagers exceptionally well. I want to talk a little bit about like brewing role models. Um, who who in, who were influences in your lives as you were coming up? I think this is yours oh. as okay. well. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, Kyle, anyone who made up a big difference in in the way that you think about beer? Um, you know, I, I I always joke that you know. I've been homebrewing since before it was cool. Uh, so I, I started homebrewing in the late 90s. And yeah, uh, you know, for me, um, uh, Sam Kilogione, well, I'm probably saying his name wrong, um, from Dogfish Head was, was big for me. We do a lot of, you know, kind of extreme experimental stuff. And he wrote a book called Extreme Brewing, which um, I still flip it open, you know, if not once a week, sometimes more often to, to you know, as a reference for me, mm -hmm. because I, I, I'm really a fan of kind of those, uh, you know, risks that he took in, at a time when, it wasn't as, as widely accepted as it is today. Um, how have your guys' personal beer palettes evolved over time? Oh. Um, <laughs> Anne, yeah, okay, absolutely. we'll start. We'll start with you. Um, yeah, it, it's. I mean, I mean, Katerina and I have known each other for a number of years. Yeah, <laughs> we're like um, friends. <laughs> we're like Not friends. Okay. Okay. Um, but it, it it definitely has, and it's something that probably as recently as three. More like four years ago, I was looking for something, you know, we, we refer to them as pellet wreckers, something that had an exceptionally strong flavor right away. And, you know, working for a brewery and working in events for breweries, I'm regularly asked, what's your favorite style of beer? And my legitimate answer is, what's the lowest ABV that's available at the event? <laughs> what can I drink a lot no, of? Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. For sure. It's, an, it's kind of an inside industry joke that all of us go for the Pilsner at the festival. Um, <laughs> so the, the, like, the, like, you know, 12% double IPAs, you know, they're getting crazy. That's not what you guys drink. Those are great to taste. Yes. I, I, don't want to drink those all day. <laughs> great to brew because consumers love them. Yes, uh, it's it's it, you know we we in New York City with you know another piece that makes us great is you know, we all get together at least once a month if, yeah. if not more often. Yeah. Um, but so we all like Anne said we all you know we all like the like the Pilsners like the lighter you know uh, easier drinking beers and then you as you read about you know consumer tastes and they want you know double IPAs and imperial stouts and you know these barley wines I'm like you know I like those too but. You know, when you're in the industry and you're doing this every day, uh, it, it takes its toll on you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they taste phenomenal, and they're fantastic. Oh, they're, um, they're but sure. it's not something you can drink all day at an event or at a beer fest or... I mean, you can. <laughs> well, it's well, not yeah. inviting. At least for part of the day. <laughs> right. yeah. You yeah. won't be as yeah. functional as you <laughs> right. ought to be. <laughs> sure, we'll see a lot of that on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. um, what, yes. what trends, I mean, so you guys all get together in what sounds like, you know, a secret cabal. Uh, <laughs> do you, like, wear, like, robes or... We, yeah. we break out our alewife caps. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly. Oh, excellent. Um, so do you guys, like, do you also not only see what the prevailing market forces are, but decide what trends you might want to pursue or how you might want to influence, I don't know, the, the public taste? I don't know if it's as much mm -hmm. of that, really, as, as it is a chance for us to you know, get together. But really, our primary focus is you know, New York City Beer Week, and, and you know, we focus on that kind of throughout the year. Right. We don't get into a lot of the style uh, discussions or trend discussions as much as, uh, you know, uh, more, you know, I guess, global problems, meaning, sure. you know, for, for all of us than for any one brewery. Um, so why don't we taste something that you've brought, Kat? Yeah, I brought, so I just went up to Maine, so I brought beer from a couple of people that are gonna be at Opening Bash, oh, which great. is okay. exciting. Um, one's Bissell Brothers and the other's Oxbow. So NYC um, Beer Week, not just for New York brewers. Yeah, so it's, it's actually the coolest part, I think, is that we get to bring in a lot of breweries that, um, you know, people have done collabs with. Uh -huh. um, again, beer is community. Uh, so it is about the week itself. There's a lot of events that we're involved in. But it goes all week, uh, all next week uh, as well. So there, there's a, and a lot of these same brands will be doing events here. So well, what did so. you, why don't you pick yeah, one yeah. that you want um, us to? Any kick flip? It's a cream ale. Wanna try that? Great. Sure, let's do that. Um, it, it's. I just went up to Maine to go. I, we do this all the time. Go to other breweries and see, you know, what's happening. And um, yeah, I, I guess you get style influences from things that they do. And some breweries are really good at it, so you chase that. Um, but yeah, that's great. Um, while we're trying this cream ale, this um, we actually have a little game okay. that we've prepared for you guys. So, um, <laughs> you. so oh, yes. the idea is that I'm going to give you three names of 
beers, oh. and only two of them are going to be real. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Kyle, we'll start with you, right? Oh, and we you. are we are keeping track. <laughs> We're keeping score. I don't know what you win, uh, <laughs> Glory. Okay. The home version of the game. Yeah. <laughs> two of these are real. One is not. Hazy Susan, Moose Drool, William Howard Draft. Which one is not a real beer? William Howard Draft. That's correct. Oh, okay. That's correct. That's, That's such a good stroll. name, though. Yeah. This is good. We can, I think well, that is the name save. of a homebrew yep. that uh. our producer created, but it's not commercially available. So well, I'd right. love to try it. Okay, great. I'll, I'll hook you guys up. Um, Anne, are you ready? Okay. Sweaty Baby, oh, Optical Illusion, Smooth Hopperator. A is the... Sweaty False. baby is incorrect. <laughs> That's correct. Okay, you guys are doing great. Oh God! All right, well, cat. Be a goza? It yeah, would right. be a goza. It would be a goza. It absolutely would be a goza. The problem when we were trying so to come gross. up with the fake names is that it turns out that They're we were real. coming up with real <laughs> names. <laughs> that we, that okay. That's our problem every single day. <laughs> yes, somebody already has the name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay, cat. Um, oh hi, Merc. Overlord's dictation. Above ground pool. <laughs> Above ground pool. That, the correct. Yeah, okay. oh. you know, I was hoping this. that was a beer. I know. I was like, that's yeah. a really, guys, that's a great name. You guys can have it. I came up with that. I give that's it. It's a nice three point two percenter. Yeah. Above <laughs> ground pool. Well, that'll be our next collab. Yes. 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 Very yes. good. Exactly. Very good. I expect a case here. to arrive on my doorstep. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Back to you, Kyle. Borderline ethereal, backwoods bastard. He's a real jerk. <laughs> He's a real jerk. <laughs> That's yeah. Are, are you really sure that isn't one of your That sounds like a lineup. That's, that's, that's a, line that's up a up bad date that you yeah. went on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And to you. Okay. Lick fillet, fear beer, creepy Pete. Again, I'm going to go with A is the false. Name. Okay, that is correct, but this was actually a trick one. None of those exist. Oh. <laughs> but that is correct. All right. This could be, you got, this could be. Go for the sweep. Yeah, yeah, sweep here. All right, ready? A lot of style. Okay. Yeah, even of more style. Jesus, even less Satan, Citra ass down. <laughs> even less Satan. That's correct. <laughs> I think we've had A and C. We've had both of those. You guys have dominated at this game. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, really excited about NYC Beer Week. Uh, people, it's going on now. If you're listening to this, it's going on now yes. so people mm -hmm. can check out all the events. Um, Kyle and Kat, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Awesome. Thank you so much. There's a calendar at nycbrew.com. nycbrew.com. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Right. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.